Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to do the second portion of this one, and it's called, What If I Don't Believe in Nassara? Because Trump didn't say it. This part, we're going to talk about the IRS and the Fed and a gold-backed currency. Coming right up. <music> Okay, so as we bring it up here, it's pretty funny. Today, I was dealing with my payroll company that decided to put a two a signature or two statement uh, vector on the account access point, and it wouldn't go through. It took me an hour and a half to deal with this. And I find out that they had actually updated their software in there. And I was thinking in the background of all this stuff because IRS stuff deals with the payroll company. So I'm going, wait, my payroll company changed everything, which messed up all of my access at points today, the 24th of June. Are we that close? Boy, that's fascinating because I had never seen them change this much stuff in a piece of software. So whatever that might mean to you meant a lot to me with that as well. So <clears throat> this is our second part of this this series. Now, we're going to do a broader part of the series, What If I Don't Believe in Asar, with a whole bunch of different topics. If you guys have a topic that you really want me to talk about, leave that below, okay? If you've seen some of the other ones, check in the playlist of What If I Don't Believe in Asara, and then <clears throat> look into that. Now, some of you also have questions like, well, you didn't answer this question. This isn't trying to answer every single question in every single video. Do you understand what I mean? Like you have this question, you can leave it, but don't get all pissy with me because I didn't answer that question in that video. There are a bunch of other videos that talk about maybe some of the things you need to look at. If you have questions on, on these videos, <clears throat> you can look at Nasara Shorts, which are the shorter ones that talk about very specific topics. And then another set of videos called the three-part series of Nasara Explained. And so I kind of do a more of a historical deep dive on a lot of those areas as well. So that gives you some idea. But this time, we're going to talk about the IRS, the Fed, and gold backed currency. Okay? So, again, I don't sell crypto, and no one should be selling crypto to you. Don't think that Scott's typing in new crypto things for you to go sign on and you're talking to me every single day. The answer is that's an that's some Indian British company that is scamming the snot out of you. Don't do it. I can't say that more clearly. Don't do it. Okay. So let's get in here. Now we've <coughs> done this on the on the executive orders, which is 13818 and I call it the bankruptcy abuse one, okay? And here's what happens. It's blocking the property of persons involved in serious human rights or abuse and corruption. So this is really interesting when we see this, and you're going to see the same kind of overall idea. We talked about this in the first video, but I'm just going to say it again. So if you have human rights abuses, and why would they bring this up? It's because these people have been in power for generations. Some of these people are not telling you that the Rockefellers or the Soros types, <coughs> that they're not telling you about their fa the 13 family history of the cabal. And that's who they are. They're in media, they're in movies, they're in the government areas. I mean, some of these government idiots, like they're... Their wives are working for a particular agency. And you're like, wait a second, hold on. Um, and it's because they're all over. And that's why it's so difficult to deal with this. Because it talks about securing stable and functioning societies, and, you know, fix, fixing those things, devastating impact on individuals, obviously, you know, the rape and pillage of kids. Um, Weakening of democracy, democratic institutions. Now, don't get too sideways because we know we're a constitutional republic. But if you take away that election part, that's what that's what it's dealing with there. Uh, degrading the rule of law. Oh, that's the court systems. Perpetuating violent conflicts. Uh, 
Think about the summer of love in 2020 where they burned cities up one side down the other. So it's all of these areas. So they're giving a very big and broad stroke. And it, this is a financial thing. And so what happens is we're blocking your property. Um, and and they're, they're not even allowing anyone to transfer this. See, this is generational wealth. So like the dude is, is in charge of it and he thinks he can give it to his kids or his wife. And so some of these people have been getting divorces ever since 2018. Now, think about that for a second. Go, go and look it up, but I'm sure someone could do a deep dive on all the different people who've been, uh, who've gotten through divorce. I can think of Gates and I can think of several other of these idiots and more of them are the big corporations. Now, one of the things that's fascinating is there are people who put together a set, a website, just a, <clears throat> all the CEO and heads of corporations and heads of government who resigned over the past four or five years. I mean, that's even a scarier amount of stuff. This never happened in that kind of level. We're talking about so many resignations, it's off the chart, and it's all related to this. Now, the secondary one that comes out here is eight one three eight four nine. I've never really talked about, I talked about obviously in the last video, but I've never really talked about it this one. This one is about the same kind of thing, but it's talking, countering Americans, America's adversaries. So basically, who are against us? And so it talks about prohibits financial institution from making loans to these basically outside organizations or outside of the country. Think of when Biden was doing stuff with his son in Ukraine. Think about uh, Romney or many of these other idiots who have people in the Burisma area. Hmm. I think that thing includes that as well. Okay. And again, it says the same thing. We're block blocking you. This is a worldwide operation. This isn't just America. So you're going to be dealing with Uruguay. You're going to be dealing with Portugal. You're going to be dealing with Spain. And you're going to be dealing with all the nations out there because the 209 nations actually have to be part of Jasara. Now, remember, BRICS is Jasara. Jasara is BRICS. They're just trying to move it forward faster because they've actually moved forward with, with all of their deletion of corruption more than you realize. Specifically, the, the, the BRICS countries, the ones that have their, their title first, right? It's um, Brazil and Russia and <coughs> China and India and South Africa. Those countries actually did it first. And those are the countries that you don't actually hear anything from. Have you thought about that one for a second? You don't know anything that's really happening inside of specifically Russia. Hmm. Interesting. Now, how do they do this? How have they been doing this and taking away their money? You see these, these tan lines versus the dark, dark blue lines. The tan lines are basically, I want to say, available for sale security. So they, they go off and buy a huge amount of a security, right? Which a security could be like a stock, okay? But it's more specific to a company. It's not like you go out and buy stocks and they're, they're, they're varied out, you know, or they're mutual funds and they're varied out with about 18,000 different companies, right? Whereas in this way, this is one targeted company that we're going to buy because we have inside information. This is how insider trading goes. Available for sale securities. They know something's going to happen. And if they don't know what's going to happen, they're going to short it and make it happen. It, it, it's the sickest system that you have out there. Now, through timeframes, even through the worst of timeframes of 2008 and 2009, when banking was getting spanked, they weren't anywhere near as much as they are today. From 2000, or 2022, 23, and 24, they are in historic levels. That's never occurred in the history of the world. You need an evidence point that Nassara is real. Right there, I'm giving it to you. Right here on the screen is the evidence. They are getting manipulated down to the smallest amounts. Then Trump says a couple other things, interesting parts. 
He promises never to allow CBDCs in the U.S. He's going to protect Americans from the government tyranny. And so in here, without, without me reading through it, basically it says, you know, tonight I'm also making another promise to protect Americans from the government tyranny. And you go, wait a second, he's making a promise. I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Now, I want you to think about that for half a second. It's, it's, it's tantamount to saying, we're going to get a whole new, I'm going to use a football term, a whole new offensive line. And you're going, yeah, but you have the great quarterback back there, but you need a whole new offensive line. We will guarantee that quarterback will never have, you know, more than 20 sacks in a season or some, it's a crazy number because this is what they're talking about. This is the kind of way it's saying. And you're going, wait a second. I know the, the crappy offensive line you have. Don't you, you have to have had a plan. See, this is intimating that he's already has a plan. And some of you are focusing on the election of 2024 and then him back in 2025 and then him starting all of this stuff. And the answer is he's already done this. What do you think happened in 2020? <clears throat> this is what's going on. Central bank digital currency is just a piece of the Great Reset. It's dead before it got out of the crib. Sorry to use a bad, you know, term that might, you know, a, a, an analogy that kind of bothers you, but that's exactly what he did. So that's the way that he's already set the sucker in motion. Great Reset's dead already. And those who are yammering about the CBDCs, which is not Nasara stuff, are just blowing smoke up your skirt. Stop letting them do that to you. Trump and the gold standard. <clears throat> I mean, then this, this person's guy going off on, this is in April of, of 2024. He's, he's keen on going back on the, you know, the gold standard, but could they really bring it black back? And, and they're intimating in here, a couple interesting people, Judy Shelton. Now, most people don't know who she is. And you think about, um, a couple interesting um, people in here, but but we'll just talk about her for a minute. Judy Shelton is so much in favor of a gold standard. And she is going to be and will be the Fed transition chairman that will go along with Steve Mnuchin for the Treasury, who's still involved. Yell Janet Yellen has no ability to affect this. She's the outside yammer point that is the stupid part of the criminal organization of, the, of this administration that's out there. But Mnuchin is doing the new treasury and Judy Shelton is going to take over the Fed for just a short time frame. Now we talk about the Fed is dead, but you have to like, once it actually is dead, you have to like kill off all of the portions, which means that you still have to like, dole out. In essence, think about you have a, an uncle that passes away and he's 94 years old and you you have the, the, the lawyer that doles out all the money to the different people. Okay. Um, the ultimate gift is a real interesting movie that you can kind of see it's a Christian movie. And, and there's different, you know, there's different family members that come in for the wealthy billionaire, uh, father and, each person gets their, their amounts coming out. That's essentially what's, what's happening with Judy Shelton. Okay. And that's the coolest part when they intimate Judy Shelton and this it's already going through, but you're not seeing it because they can't tell you about this stuff. Okay. Time to say goodbye to income taxes, examining the national consumption tax. Now I want you to be very, very careful. I'm going to pull this off the screen for half a second. When people say to me, well, are you going to eliminate taxes? And I go, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about sales tax? Are you talking about excise tax? Are you talking about a tariff, which is the type of tax? Are you talking about property tax? Are you talking about an income tax? And some of you even get more specific, like, well, state 
you know, federal tax, federal taxation. I'm like, there's no state federal taxation. There's state or federal, but that is an income tax. Okay. So be careful about which one you're talking about. Now, the constitution basically decries anything that would <coughs> have a income tax. Now, we also know that we have the supposed 16th amendment in here. Oops, sorry. Click the wrong button there. And she's and this this woman Jessica talks about this, but she and this is a year ago, by the way. And and so I don't want you to totally read into this this fair tax because there's also a group that talked about uh, fair taxation like a flat tax. This is not flat taxing, okay? Flat tax people talk about 10% or 12% or whatever of income tax. And the answer is we're not doing that either, okay? And, and even what, even the article is intimating a concept. And so it says a 23% tax proposes a national sales tax in 2025. And then they'll exclude things like the purpose of businesses, investments, exports, you know, state government functions. Interesting. Rate of tax, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2025, the rate of tax will be combined with federal um, generated revenue of 14% for hospital rates. So we're talking about a Medicare tax replacement for old age. So we're basically pulling away that, the adjustment for that family consumption allowances for poverty lines, monthly tax reports, dissolution of the IRS. Now forget about this whole thing. So I don't want you to freak out about this. This is what they proposed. And the reality is that we're moving to an through a sales tax, which the possibility is anywhere from 14 to 17%. Some people will say 17, some people will say 14. I think it's more like 14, neither here nor there but it would just be for new items. If you have a garage sale and you're selling a whole bunch of garage sale, that's already been sold, right? If I take this iPhone, that's an iPhone 12, obviously when I bought it new, I paid sales tax on it. But why do I have to pay sales tax on something that's used? You see, if you were on many of the marketplaces that are out there, you don't have to pay sales tax. But how come we have to pay other weirder taxes out there. For, for instance, as a business, I have to pay property tax. Now, people get, and, and, and we have to pay in, a private, in the private sector too. The private person has to pay property tax on something that I've already purchased. So every year they do a, a tax mill against you up or down, right? And they never go down. I've just almost never seen it unless you have a completely depressed area. And my point is, is that you see this stuff and you're and and you're reacting. Don't react to this stuff. Now, in a business setting, everything that I bought, because they can't tax the building, though they might, they do tax the building. Don't get me wrong. But if I only rent from a building owner, they're going to tax me on everything that's in my in my place. And so I have to go and write off new, three new computers that I threw out because they're old three new, I mean, three printers or whatever, bigger kinds of things because they're, they're taxing me on that stuff too. This is like a double taxation part. And so that kind of stuff is gonna go away in so many cool ways. And people who are, you know, of particular areas, I mean, they're, I mean, if, if you're nonprofit organizations, real nonprofit, not the fake ones like the Clinton Foundation, which is gonna go away too. See, they're actually telling you between the lines, that Trump has been doing this kind of stuff, right? Or thinking this way. Say goodbye. This is one governor step for, for Oklahoma. And he says goodbye to grocery tax. And they're talking about deleting grocery tax. Now in Oklahoma, we, we have taxes on food. Some states don't. And it actually intimates that same kind of thing. That only, we're, the problem is the one, we're one of 13 states that have a sales tax on groceries. Now, when you say you're going to kill off the grocery tax, um, first off, that are those are those main items. See, we're not going to have sales tax on those basic items, and I don't think we're going to have it on a state or a federal level. 
so people who get all complainy with me, and that's the end of that one. So hold on one second. Um, people that complain to me that how is Nassara really going to benefit me? And I say, calm down. Every single person from the lowest income to the highest income, to the middle, to the high mid, the low mid, whatever you want to pick, is going to benefit directly from this. You're not going to have a UBI, which is totally stupid. We would distribute millions and millions of dollars to every single person, and then you would devalue a currency. That isn't happening. Now, that does not talk about Social Security or Social Security SSDI. You see, I get questions all the time, and they say, like, what are the Nasara benefits that I'm going to get? I'm like, what do you mean? Someone asked me that question. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know what Nasara benefits mean. You see, you need to be specific when you ask a question, okay? Uh, and because guess what? The people in charge are doing that same thing. And in the future, when we have a whole new set of people, they need to be cussing and discussing these kinds of things. They need to be talking through those areas and you need to be involved. So this is also my call in here. You got to get involved. You got to get involved in state, local, mayor, federal government. Get involved. Now, God's told me to do something different in my life. I'm going to be teaching on a lot of other things. But many of you can actually do this. Now, some of you are going, well, I'm 75 years old. I can't really do that anymore. That's fine. I'm not telling you to do that. But you know what? I know people who are 62 years old or 68 years old and they that you know they they would love if if they were released from the debts and all the other things they would love to go you know I'd like to be involved you could be involved in a city council that doesn't take more than maybe 5 or 10 hours a week i i don't i'm making up numbers i don't i don't know what the exact number is or being on a school board or being on an xyz whatever that might be Ask the Lord what he's supposed to tell you to do because we need you. The whole world needs you to be involved because that's what a constitutional republic is going to be. Trump has actually told you all of this stuff. He hasn't missed anything out there. He's told you about it, but you haven't been listening with that next level ears. Now, some people want to call him 5D and I'm, I, I blah, no next level or non-matrix kind of thinking. I hope that helped you out. Remember, if you want to know some more key pieces of information or you have a global thing like, could you talk about, like, my, my friend says this about Nasara and I don't know how to answer them on that or specific areas that you want to get into. Hey, I'm, I'm looking for that kind of stuff too. So I want you to be involved with me and we can talk about those. And if you get a real big, good, broad topic, like I said, IRS, okay, then let's get into that more. Happy to do it. Hope that helps you guys. Thanks so much.